In this video, we'll learn how to design responsive social media buttons with HTML and CSS. Okay, so here we are on my desktop with the responsive social media button. So at full width, we're going to see all six buttons here, and it's going to display a across the entire page. So we have Facebook, Google+, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and then email. Then once we size it down, it's going to change its layout twice. And at the shortest width for cell phones, for example, it's just going to be the single uh, bar for each social media button. And then we'll have kind of two columns here to one row uh, at the full width. So I tried to select the exact colors that we have here for each social media so you don't have to go searching for them. And when we click on one of the social media buttons, it's going to send us to a new tab in our web browser um, where it's going to open up that page. So to get started on this, to save us some time, what I've done is gone ahead and created some starter files that's going to include all of the HTML already laid out along with um, the CSS and fonts for the icons. So all we'll have to do is style it. So go ahead and get the starter files from the description of the video and open up the index.html and style.css documents in your text editor. So I'm using Sublime Text. Sublime Text is a free text editor. Uh, and then the color layout that I'm using, I think it's like second from the bottom or something. So up top, we have some head information already laid out. We have uh, the style.css and font CSS thing linked along with our title of the website, responsive social buttons, and the meta name viewport up top for the responsiveness of it with the initial scale one there. Okay, so once you have the index.html and style.css documents open, make sure you just open index.html in your web browser and then uh, we'll be ready for the styling. So I've just added uh, an h1 style here or tag here just to create a little bit of text for us so we don't have just the social stuff. So this is what you're going to see by default with the starter files and let me just explain uh, some of the HTML here real quick and then we'll go to the style sheet. So here I just have them linking to my pages but put your own links in here obviously and then I'm going to show you how if you don't want to include all of these you can change the width so you can display four instead of six for example and have certain stuff display on mobile and not display on mobile. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get started with the first style here following what I already included in the, st in the starter files. So that's going to be the social class. So just write dot social for the social class and then li for the list item. And then what we're going to do is tell that to display block next to one another. We're going to give that margin of zero, padding, zero. And then we're going to give it the width for the six different icons. So if you just divide uh, 100 by six, what we're going to get is about 16 point 666 six, six, and so on. So if you want to just have four, for example, obviously you want to do you know 25% here or two, do 50%. And then we'll change the percentages later to uh, to fit the mobile version. So then what we'll do is just tell it to float to the left side of the screen and then we can drop down to the next style. So now if we refresh, we're going to see that they're going to line up next to one another already here. 
rather than being uh, on top of one another. So let's go ahead and style those icons themselves now. So we'll just reference that with social I. So if you remember for Font Awesome, which is the icon set we're using, they use the I tag, which is really for italics, but that works too in this case um, for the icons. Okay, so we'll just give that a, or let's just write color and then we'll give it the color of white or FFF um, later on. We'll see the white take into effect once we have our background color. And then let's give that a font size of 190%. That's going to be a good size for the icons. And then we'll leave the opacity blank for right now. I'm going to show you that later on. And then we'll give it a margin of zero. And we'll tell them to text align center inside of the list item with a width of 100% padding yeah let's take away this color because otherwise we're not going to see it just yet okay so there we go so now it's looking pretty similar to the original there already without the colors Okay, so let's give that a padding of 4%. And then a CSS3 style, which isn't that well recognized yet, I don't think. At least uh, Sublime Text isn't giving it a different color here. So that's just box dash sizing border box. And what that's going to do is it's going to sort of tell the browser that um, this is a solid box. I don't know how to explain it properly, but without it, if you just take that away and then add it back, you'll see what I mean, how it doesn't line up the full, uh, you know, 16% without that 16.6 such. Okay, so now we can start Um, giving the icons some more style here so let's just write that this has opacity but let's not enter it yet so that's going to be when we hover over the icon so just write dot social I hover and then leave the opacity blank for right now we'll get that we'll get to that in a minute once we have our background colors to each one of the buttons okay so the opacity is going to change when we hover over it once we add the colors. Okay, so now we'll, we'll give the colors to each using an ID for each one. So we have Facebook, for example, email, Google+, Instagram. And let's start with Facebook just because that's the first one that we have there. So for ID, write the hashtag before it instead of period, which is for classes. And we'll just give that the background color. And Facebook, there hex uh, color is hashtag 3A5795. So now if we come back over and we refresh, there we have the first one, but we're missing a little bit of padding there, it looks like. And that's because I forgot to, let's see. Forgot to add the um, semicolon after the padding. And let's give it the color too so we can see it taking effect. And the other ones we'll see kind of lightly because the body background color is an off white. And let me just add this semicolon here. Now if we refresh, it's going to look just like the original there without the opacity. Okay, so let's drop down and we'll give the others their background colors. So the next one is going to be Google Plus. So just write 
hashtag Google dash plus for the ID and then background and the hex value for Google plus is hashtag D95232. Okay, and then next is Twitter and the background color for this. The hex value is 5EA9DD. Okay, and then if we refresh, there we have them taking form with their colors. Okay, and now let's add the YouTube background color, which is E12B27. Okay, and then Instagram, which I wasn't sure which one to use for Instagram, but I think this is right. So just give it the background and the hashtag 527F. A4. Okay, and then the last one for email, I just use the color of Gmail by default because that's probably the most popular email um, provider. So that's C92 C19. And then if we refresh, there we have all of our background colors laid out for the buttons. Okay, so you'll also notice that all of the ones that are Google related are red and then the others are blue. So it's kind of like blue on the left and red on the right when we're at the, um, the two column width. So now let's add some opacity. So I just added the hover opacity, made that one, and then 0.5 for the regular default opacity. I think the original is 0.6. So now when we hover over it, it's going to give us that um, color effect that we're seeing. So you can change that around and experiment with it uh, to give it you know, the opacity that you want, especially related to the, whatever the design you're um, making. Okay, so I like the 0.6 and then one looks pretty good to me. It's not too light, and then it's nice and bright when you hover over it. Okay, so now we'll drop down to our media queries where we're going to have two different um, sort of media query sets here for two different widths. So we have the main width, then we'll have sort of an iPad type width here but you can always check the different device widths to decide what you want to do with it or if you want it to display or change multiple times. So we're going to go with media screen and max width 980 pixels and then let's just to go along with the rest of the styling, let's style the heading 1 um, just so that size is down with it too for the sake of the tutorial even though you're probably only really watching for the buttons. We'll just do that so it will all flow nicely. So as you can see the size is going to drop a little bit. So let's just style the H1. So I'm just going to drop the font size a little bit and change it to 150 percent from I believe 175 and then let's style the icons. So write dot social i and then we'll give that a font size of 175 percent from 190 at the full width. As you can see up here there's 190 for the icon, 175 originally for the heading one. Okay and then we'll also just drop the padding a little bit and this is up to you if you want to do that. So I think it looks better when you decrease the padding slightly as you size it down. So now if we refresh, it's going to change for us at that 980 pixel mark. 
the only other style that we need to add for this width is changing the actual list item width for the buttons. So just write social li, or I wrote i, so now it's not going to display properly. Uh, let me just change that to the list item. So that's different. So I'll just change uh, social i to social li and then that width is 50% and then if we refresh once we size down it's going to change into the two columns with three rows here. Okay. And next we'll add the style for the smallest width version. And let me just pull up how this is going to look on an iPhone here, for example, since the browser won't flex down that narrow. Okay. So on the left we have the original, on the right the one that we're working on, and it still looks okay like that with the, with the, uh, the two columns at that width, I'd say. So that's up to you if you wanted to leave it like that, of course. But let's add our next and last media query here, and we'll just make this for a max width of 768 pixels. Okay, and then open and close the swirly brackets. And then again, we'll just style for the heading one, followed by the icon and a list item. So we should probably have done the list item first, but that's okay before the icon. So we'll just go with 125% for the H1. 155% uh, from 175 for the icon and then I'm going to reduce the padding a tiny bit more also to 2% instead of 3% and then lastly we're going to style the list item itself and we'll give that a width of 100% and tell it to float none instead of float left because there's no need to float when there's just one row. Okay, and then if we refresh it, there we have our finished version here with the smallest width. So that does it for the tutorial, you guys. What I'm going to do right now is I just want to get all of these displaying right here so we can see them all on the same page. Okay, so there we have the full width, the single, and then the two. So that does it, you guys. Also, if you wanted to get your own icons, you can go to Font Awesome's website and do a quick search for the different icons you want to add here. So I thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.